So we are given two balls of mass m and they are hanging by a thread of length l and distance between them is given as x. If they are approaching each other with a velocity a by root x, we need to find the rate dq by dt with which the charge leaks off. So let's start with the, our acceleration of each pole. That will be v dv by dx and v is given in terms of x. So we differentiate this multiplied by v and get acceleration as minus a square by x square. Now if we write the force in x direction on this ball, that will be mass into its acceleration and its value will be t sin theta minus kq square by x square. So t sin theta will be in this direction minus kq square by x square. mg is vertical, so we don't need to write that here. We are writing this in x direction. Now tension, because there is no acceleration along the direction of the string, we can say t is equal to mg cos theta plus kq square by x square sin theta. So forces in this direction, the direction of string are balanced. So we put the value of t from here to here and value of acceleration we put as minus a square by x square. Okay, we are putting mod so we can neglect the negative sign. So we get this by putting these values. Now this is, if you take minus kq square by x square, this becomes one minus sine square theta, which is cos square theta. Now here we are going to start taking assumptions. So sine theta can be assumed as x by 2l and cos theta can be assumed as 1. So this gives our equation kq square by m is equal to gx cube by 2l minus a square. So here we are neglecting a square compared to gx cube by 2l. So why we are neglecting we'll see in next slide. For now just understand this a square is very small compared to this. So this equation becomes q is equal to root of mg by 2 kl x power 3 by 2. So if we differentiate this because we want dq by dt, so that be that is that will become 3 by 2, this 3 by 2 will come out, times the this constant into x power half into dx by dt. So we differentiate this with respect to x first and then dx by dt, chain rule. So dx by dt is a by root x. So x root x into a by root x becomes a, which gives our answer dq by dt is equal to 3 a by 2 root of mg by 2 kl. Now let us see why we neglected a square. So this is the equation which we got from where we neglected a square to get our and then differentiated to get our answer. So now see, I am sure you must have seen a gold leaf electroscope experiment. So you can check this experiment on YouTube also, any video you can check that once you touch the conductor here, any, if you give this gold leaf some charge and they get separated and then you remove the conductor. So if the charge stays on the leaves and they get separated, you won't notice them coming together quickly. In fact, you won't be able to notice them coming together at all. So in typical gold leaf electroscope experiment, the charged leaves, when left alone, come back closer together in hours. As charge leakage is very low in air, it's not humanly possible to notice it move like an hour end of a clock. So if you do see them moving them closer together immediately, that is because they are charging it by induction. That is not the case here. If we are charging here by conduction and we are giving some permanent charge to this whole electroscope, then the leaves will come back closer together after a very long time. So they move very slow. However, in our case, let's assume large velocity. So we get a larger value of A. See, we want to neglect, here we have neglected A square. So let's assume that A is very high. Let's assume that for a moment. Let the speed of pulse be one millimeter per second, which is noticeable to eye. 
right? From shown positions, so we'll come back to it, they stick together in less than two seconds. So let's take a practical case where you have a 10 centimeter long thread and you have two small balls at the bottom which are separated by a distance four millimeter. So this is to the scale. You can see how small this angle is. In fact, I encourage you to find out what is the value of tan theta, sin theta, and, uh, and see if it is equal to 2 by 100. So anyway, let's take this case and coming back to our equation, so let's see these two terms. So this term will be 10 into x, which is 4 millimeter, whole cube, divided by 2 into length of the thread, which is 100 millimeter. This comes to be this and a square. So a is v root x. So a square is v square x. So v we are assuming to be very high, which is one millimeter, one, one millimeter per second. So this becomes 10 power minus three whole square times x, which is four millimeter. So this comes to be four into 10 to the power minus nine. So now you compare these two terms you can see that this term is 800 times smaller than the first term. So this is when we considered a large value of A. In reality, it will be even lesser than this. So here it is 800. In reality, it will be probably even 10 times. So 8000 times smaller it can be. So we have assumed the worst case and still it's 800 times smaller. So it's safe to assume this to neglect the second term. So we have assumed high value of a, still it's very small compared to this. In reality, a square will be even further small. So it's safe to neglect this. So now we know why we were able to neglect this. Now, if instead of a charge leaking in air, it was leaked via conduction to ground or something. So instead of leaking in air, if we connected these these balls to the ground, then this whole method will not work as A would be quite high. So this method works because the charge was leaking in the air and practically speaking, that is very, very less compared to when you put it in the ground or something. So when the charge leakage is very less, the velocity is also very less. And if velocity is less, a is very less and if A is very less, we can safely neglect this term and then just differentiate this and get our answer dq by dt.